the Studio Cuts Podcast with Taylor with WRRV. This is the Studio Cuts Podcast. Hey, it's Taylor from 92.7-96.9 WRRV. And the Studio Cuts Podcast is where we interview artists that were featured on Sunday Studio Cuts, our new music show on WRRV. Today, we are interviewing an artist right out of Austin, Texas, who's making a huge impact with his music and live performances. Today, we are interviewing Mobley. So, Mobley, I know it's super corny to ask, but we have to. What was 2020 like for you? Um, long. <laughs> long. I think that's uh, probably the, the overriding impression. Uh, it feels like... It feels like it's been three or four years since last March, but mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, obviously, live touring has gone away, and that that is basically uh, what what my business is built around. So, um, just kind of refocusing on on other things that are important, taking time to try to be creative and all that. Um, uh, lots of boring answers because uh, it's been it's, it's been kind of a boring time in, in certain ways, at least. Now you're from a huge city, Austin, Texas. Did the pandemic crush the scene down there? Uh, you know, I, I would say rather that we're kind of in uh, suspended animation more than we're crushed. But um, but definitely it's had a it's had a massive impact. Um, no, nobody responsible is is putting on any live shows, and um, and it, it's it's definitely been a difficult time for those of us who um, make our living playing music live. But um, I'm I'm hopeful that before this year is out, we'll be back back on stages and, and in clubs again. I think everyone is kind of right there with you, hoping for the same. Now, before you were performing full time, you were a web designer. What made you take the plunge to go from that to music full time? Uh, it, you know, it's funny. It didn't. It didn't really happen all at once. Um, as these things tend to happen, um, it, it it happened by degrees. And so, you know, um, even as I was working as a web designer developer. Um, I was working on music full time, so uh, the big difference has been uh, having less of that other work to do. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it just uh, you know you you work and you play shows and you try to sell records and then one day you do the math and you're like I think I can I think I can quit that other job now. <laughs> so um, so it it, it just kind of happened. Um, happened under its own power really speaking of records your ep is due out in february what can we expect from that um i think it's a really good record uh i think people (laughs) will enjoy it uh it's um it's kind of a a journey through some of my favorite uh kinds of guitar music i guess I, i wrote the record on a guitar while i was uh, on vacation in Thailand, and um, I hadn't really written on guitar in a while at the time, and so you know it's got some some psych rock influence stuff on on there, some um, like post new wave stuff. Um, it's kind of all over the map, but it's um, very rhythmic and melodic and. Uh, enjoyable, I think. So I, I think people, I think people enjoy it. Austin 360 said you are hands down the single of the year with your song James Crow. What does it feel like to get that kind of recognition from your own city? Uh, it's 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 very nice. Um, you know, I, I as an artist, especially right now, you can feel pretty isolated. And then for me, I I make all my music by myself, so. Um, it's easy to kind of get in my head about this stuff. And so to have confirmation from other human beings that, that what I'm doing seems to have some kind of merit. um, I I appreciate it a lot. We know 2020 took away the performance aspect, but how else did it affect your music? Um, You know, 
the, 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 the most immediate impact I felt right when everything locked down was that it was really difficult for me to create under the under these circumstances you know mm -hmm. I, I feel as though in this country we are kind of um, honestly kind of disturbingly numb to just this, the magnitude of carnage that's happening right now mm -hmm. um, and um, so finding my bearings amidst that has been a challenge but um but it's also been a time when um simply by virtue of being forced to slow down i've kind of connected with other artists i've been producing for other people a lot um working on uh my next record and the one after that so um you know it's it's been a as strange as it feels to say, it's been a productive time in its way, but um, but yeah, it's a uh, it's a challenge. Uh, it's a challenge, definitely to to sit at home and and write songs while the world is on fire outside, um, and and feeling kind of powerless to do much to help with that. You just mentioned Carnage in the U.S. and your song James Crow is super fun and upbeat but it really has a serious message about race. Is race something you've always wanted to address in your music? It's it's something I've addressed in my music before, and uh, unfortunately it's something I imagine I will have to address in my music again. But, um, yeah, it was just, uh, you know, just a strange cosmic coincidence that I happened to, uh, to have made a record uh, where where that was being addressed so directly uh, and have it come out during a year where perhaps to a greater degree than, than has happened in maybe a hundred years, um, the, the country was grappling with its racism problem. Uh, but, but I think, um, I think music is, is first and foremost expression and, expression is nothing if it doesn't convey meaning and so uh, so I try not to shy away from that I think that's a really beautiful way to put that your video for James Crow picks up right where your last video for nobody's favorite left off you have to tell me what it was like to shoot it all in one take <laughs> <laughs> uh, extremely stressful um, <laughs> so I I directed the music video uh, and if you watch the video, you know, as you said, it mostly happens in one take. But the thing that you can't see is that when I'm not on camera, I'm basically chasing behind the cameraman, um, shouting directions to all the actors and um, our crew um, to kind of try to pull off this harebrained scheme that I had uh, <laughs> to, to shoot this. It's, it's ultimately kind of a heist video, uh, like this three and a half minute heist video in one take. Um, with some complicated stuff in it, there's a there's a slow motion passage in the middle, and so if you're shooting that in one take, what that means is uh, just on one of the beats, the music starts playing at double speed, and so um, the extras had to handle that, the camera crew had to handle that. Uh, it was really amazing to uh, to see a group of people pull together and and create a piece of art like that. But um, but yeah. F First and foremost, really, really stressful and uh, <laughs> gratifying when it came together. Was it your idea to do the video in one take? It was. It was. I um, <laughs> I, I was really <laughs> insistent about it, um, much to the consternation of, of some of my um, crew members, but, but we were able to pull it off. And you're making a film, too. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so... Um, those uh, nobody's favorite and James Crow are parts one and two of a four-part film that will come out um, sometime after the record comes out. But uh, the the larger film tells the re rest of the story uh, of the the my character and and the heroine who we meet in these videos. Um, we kind of follow their story and see where it ends up. And that comes out right around the same time as your EP, right? 
Yeah, so on the day that the record comes out, we'll be putting out the the last single, which is called Mate, and that'll have its own video, um, which is a whole other wild story. We shot with a cinema robot, um, and that was really fun. But that that's kind of a separate thing from this film. Um, but yeah, this film will come out probably a week or two after the record comes out. Um, so late, late February, early March. What do you find yourself liking more right now? Creating music or creating videos? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> so film was was kind of what I thought I was going to do. Film is what I studied in school. And so it's kind of a, a it's definitely a passion of mine. I would say they scratch different itches. Mm -hmm. um, film is a little bit more instant gratification for me because, you know, you, you have the idea and then you shoot you shoot the thing and then you've got all this footage on your computer and it looks beautiful and and that feels great whereas um at least for me it's a bit more of a labor to to write a song and then to turn that song into a record and then you have to wait months and months and months before it's out in the world so um i would say um i would say music is is my love my long-term relationship and i occasionally have a tryst with film. <laughs> I think that's a pretty good way to put it. <laughs> yeah. Like I've said before, like you've said before, you really aren't able to perform live shows right now, but you're getting ready to kick off your Devil in a Daydream virtual tour. What's this for? Yes. So um, this is going to be uh, a series of live stream performances. We're partnering up with um, about 10 venues around the country where I would have been performing under normal circumstances. And then I'm going around to various areas um, locally, like unconventional places to shoot. I shot on the rooftop of a hotel. I'm shooting at the Formula One track here, uh, the Central Library, um, off in the, off in the, the, the brush lands out here. So shooting a, in a bunch of... Um, unconventional spaces and then we'll be partnering with those venues to present the shows and um via ticketed live streams and the the proceeds from those tickets will go to um furloughed workers for for those venues and also to a uh, a local nonprofit here called the dollar fund which uh provides direct aid to uh people of color who work in the arts in healthcare and in the service industry. That's incredible. That's really awesome. I saw that you have a stop in New York City. I think it's sometime in March too. Are you excited for that? Yeah, I am. I am. My the the, the last live show that I played was a sold out show um, at the Bowery Ballroom, which was just so much fun. And little did I know at the time it was going to be <laughs> the last fix I would get for for a year plus. <laughs> But uh, I always love playing New York, so I'm, yeah, I'm really excited about that. Awesome. So you'll be going to a bunch of cities soon when you kick off this virtual tour. But my last question is, if someone were to come to your city, Austin, Texas, what do they absolutely have to do, try, see? What, what, what would it be? Oh, man. Um, well, if I'm playing a show, they have to come to my show, for sure. <laughs> well, of course. Uh, <laughs> Aside from that, I would say I would say try to get off the beaten path. Um, Austin is is kind of a tourist paradise. There's live music everywhere, lots of good food, all sorts of stuff like that. But there are so many great little local places. I live in a I live in a neighborhood that's full of immigrants from all over the world. So um, I'm always eating like good Mexican food, food, good Thai food, good Vietnamese food. Um, I would say probably go like to the north central side of Austin or the south, south Austin, and then just go in some rest, some, some like restaurant you've never heard of. Don't, don't look it up on Yelp or, or <laughs> TripAdvisor or anything like that. Just go into some local looking place and, and check it out because that's, that's kind of the heart and soul of the city for me. Awesome. Well, if I make it back down there, I'll definitely have to take your advice for that. 
Yeah, let me know. I'll, I'll give you some tips. Well, thank you, Mobley, so much. Your EP, Young and Dying in the Occident Supreme, is due out February 19th. Even getting a little bit of a movie with that as well. So thank you so much for chatting with us on the Sunday Studio Cuts podcast. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Take care. Make sure to grab Mobley's new EP, Young and Dying in the Occident Supreme, out on February 19th. And don't forget to catch Sunday Studio Cuts, a new music show featuring all of the up-and-coming alternative music hosted by me every Sunday at 10 p.m. on 92.7-96.9 WRRV. Join us next week as we interview another up-and-coming alternative artist on the Studio Cuts podcast.